Welcome everyone to another Star Wars The Old Republic video and this one's going to be a really exciting video because we have the new roadmap. Okay, so this is the roadmap for 2017 so it's outlining the game direction all the way until December and also early 2018. And we have some really exciting information if you guys haven't already heard but I just want to quickly mention before we get into it that this is going to be a completely uh, informational video so I'm just going to outline the information some of the details and stuff for those of you who haven't seen it and I'm going to leave my opinions out of it because I have some really strong stuff I want to say uh, some of my own thoughts about it and I'm going to actually put that all in a separate video just so that you guys know that this is you know about information and the next video is going to be about my opinions about it okay because there's just kind of so much stuff I want to say, it's, it's good, but there's also so bad in so many respects and a little bit disappointing as well. But okay, I'm getting into my opinions. Let's get into what the actual information is, which I will say is actually really exciting and what the community has been asking for. So here is the fall roadmap for 2017. So basically they confirmed server merges, which is arguably the most exciting thing. It's called the United Forces campaign. And guys, I'm going to do a separate video on this, okay? Because if I start doing a video on this right now, it's going to be so long and there's so many nuances and details of how these server merges are going to go down. And it seems like they've actually flushed out the ideas really well, but just as a short summary, basically what the United Forces campaign is going to be, is it's a gradual progression of server merges and we have the dates as well. On October 10th, we're going to see like the foundation being laid uh, so this is kind of going to be part of a patch but you're not going to see any visible changes in the game then October 24th you get the actual formation of it which is the servers are going to change and um, here are here is what's going to go down the Harbinger the Bedrin Colony and the Bastion will all become one server called the hot prospect. I'll leave my opinions on that name later. This is going to be the North American server. Uh, we're going to have a second North American server where it's going to combine Jedi Covenant, Shadowlands, Ebon Hawk, Prophecy of the Five, and Jung Ma. And this new server is going to be called the Starforge. Then on the European side, we're going to have three new mega servers. Uh, the Progenitor, Tuma Freedom Nod, and Red Eclipse will become the Darth Malgus server. This is going to be for English. Then the Mantle of the Force, Battle Meditation, and Darth Nihilus will become the Leviathan. This is going to be the European French server and then T3M4, Vangervalis Chain and Jarkai Sword are going to become Tulak Horde which is the new German European server. So a lot of changes are going to come with that, so many details. I'm going to outline that all in a new video. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can go run and check that out. But let's keep going with the roadmap itself and go on to some of the more, um, you know, the gameplay direction and other stuff like that. So basically, we're going to get a huge update on November 28th, and that is where we're going to get a lot of the new content coming up. So on November 28th, we'll get the new Operation Boss, Nahut. Now, call me crazy, guys, but I thought that was supposed to come out October 10th. Like, we're getting a patch, I think, either October, uh, yeah, October 10th, I think. And I thought that was where Nahut Boss was going to come in. Like, I thought the new Operation Boss was coming, but for some reason, I must have been mistaken, or they must have changed it. But now we're getting the new Operation Boss all the way on November 28th, which is insane but we're actually getting a ton of really cool new stuff on that date uh, or on that patch as well some of the other stuff we're getting is we're going to get the next chapter of our story so we'll get a new flashpoint uh, this flashpoint is called a traitor among the chiss so obviously for that traitor who was revealed on iocath which i won't spoil is going to now go to the chiss planet of Kopero, and uh, we're going to get the new storyline there and it's going to be a flashpoint as well and we um the story is not going to conclude. They did reveal that the concluding chapter of the story will come early 2018. So we don't, we're not going to get some closure as to what's exactly going to happen with the traitor, but it's just going to be another chapter of the story. So we're getting the new Operation Boss, we're getting the new story, we're also going to be getting a ton of quality of life improvements, which they haven't exactly detailed to us so far, so we're probably going to get new, more information on that later. They are also releasing a new PvP war zone. Now we don't have any information, which is one huge qualm I have with this roadmap. I mean, Keith promised us a detailed roadmap, and then for a lot of stuff provided us basically no details because we already knew we were getting a new war zone. Now this basically confirms for us this is not a new um, game zone. Like this is not a new what? What do you call it? Like it's not a new PvP match type, it's just going to be a new map. And he provided us absolutely no details as to what that map was. But he did say we're going to also be getting a new Galactic Starfighter map and that's going to be taking place over Iocath. Um, so I'm assuming maybe the Warzone might also be taking place on Iocath, maybe not. Once again, we have no details. But either way, those are the new stuff that we're getting with November 28th. So all the way in like over a month's time, we're going to be getting a new Warzone, a new Galactic Starfighter Warzone, um, the boss, and then the Flashpoint. 
Now, in terms of those quality of life improvements I was talking about earlier, we don't have like the specific confirmed details, but he said we're going to be getting stuff like a better group finder. Uh, we're getting legacy bank improvements. And what he said about that was we're going to be getting a new, um, we're going to be getting the ability to put credits into our legacy bank. So it's going to work very similar to guild banks, for example. So you can still have the ability to keep credits on your character and not have that transferable, but you can also have the ability to deposit credits into your legacy bank and then those can be accessed by any character on your legacy. Now that's going to be extremely convenient for someone like myself who is often mailing credits around and it's probably going to be a nice quality of life improvement uh, for everyone else as well. So that's awesome. He also said we're gonna get be getting a means of boosting a character to level 70. I believe that just means we're getting a new type of Outlander token or something. And then he said uh, some United Forces rewards, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, they also said that in early 2018, they're planning some new features. Like for example, they're gonna completely overhaul the conquest system and they're gonna put a much stronger focus on daily activities and giving guilds and players better rewards. So I'm going to try to stay away from my own opinions once again, but I do want to say, as you guys can see here, we don't actually have those many details. At least it wasn't what I was expecting. We're just kind of getting teased. And also it seems to me like what this passage is saying is hold off until November 28th. That's when we're actually getting all the good stuff. And for now, we're just going to be once again in this content lull where we don't have much to do in the game anymore. November 28th seems to be the time when we're actually getting stuff. But I mean, Okay, I'll save it all for the opinion video. Screw it. I'm, I, if, the second I start getting to my opinions, it's going to be a five minute rant. So, okay, let's go on to story and companions because this is a huge thing. Players want some major companions to return. So, as I mentioned earlier, we're getting the new Flashpoint. In terms of uh, story, that's about it. Uh, but for companions, they said they're planning on bringing some companions back. The only companion they said for sure they're bringing back is Ensign Reyna Temple, uh, which is with the Imperial Agent. Uh, still no word on Kira or Jaysa, which is the companions a lot of people want back. So I have no clue why they're not bringing them back. I mean, it's just so clear in the community that people wanted to come back. But um, they're bringing back Reyna Temple and probably a few others who they haven't confirmed yet. Uh, they also said they're kind of thinking about ways of improving your companion experience. Lately, they did something really nice, which was now you can get influence by sending them on missions. That was a huge quality of life improvement. And they said they're going to be, you know, they're going to start thinking of doing things where it um, improves your quality of life in the same way. So that's going to be nice. But that's about it, guys. No other story or companion content, which is insane. I think that's terrible. They really have dropped the ball on that point. Uh, one new flashpoint in like a month is really very, very disappointing. Okay, going on to Galactic Command. Um, so they're going to be making quite a few nice improvements. Firstly, they're improving the content we get out of the crates. Uh, basically, all they're doing is they're adding in another slot. And in that slot, it grants you a small chance to receive a higher tier mod and enhancement. Uh, it can also give you a Grand Chance Cube, a CXP buff, or a CXP consumable. Now that's pretty awesome guys because they are basically giving you one more item but not just a crappy item it's actually some really nice stuff so once again guys you're only going to be getting the mod or the enhancement so you're not getting the armory like a set bonus or anything but hey it's still a higher level mod is a higher level mod it'd be awesome if you can get a grand chance cube that thing sells in the g10 for like a million credits a cxp buff is also nice because a cxp buff is worth like two to three million credits if you get the 100% buff. The 25% buff is worth like 500k to a million credits. So that's still pretty awesome. And then a CXP consumable, obviously just giving you more CXP. So once, so now Galactic Crates are gonna give you more bang for your buck, which is awesome. It's always nice to see them working on that and improving that. Uh, I still think RNG is gonna be an issue, but hey, we'll see what they do about that in the future. We're also getting a new legacy perk. This one is also really awesome. They said for every character that reaches command rank 300, they will automatically add an additional 25% CXP to your entire legacy up to a maximum of 100% meaning if you have four characters who have hit command rank 300 you will immediately get a 100% buff to your CXP so get grinding guys does this work retroactively so you can get your characters up to 300 before the patch even hits and then have that applied to your entire legacy so that's basically like having a superior command boost active at all times except now you can actually activate one more get like 200 percent and at times when they do the event where you get double cxp it's going to be absolutely insane um so yeah that's going to be pretty awesome a lot easier to level up your characters if you've already leveled up a few of them to 300. 
they also confirmed they will not be increasing the CXP cap. So now it's still capped at 300. Um, I'll talk about what new gear they're introducing in later patches, but the bottom line is if you get your character to 300, you're good for the next few months and you're gonna be getting that buff and basically gearing won't be the biggest issue for you. They also said that they're reviewing uh, the amount of CXP they wanna give in all areas of the game. Uh, they said they have no real indication of bringing down the CXP value for the daily area, so it does seem like that's getting closer to becoming a permanent thing, but it also seems like they might be willing to increase CXP values for heroics and other stuff, because that, that glitch, if it was a glitch, had some really positive benefits and impact to the community, and they're seeing that, and so now they're thinking about applying that to other areas of the game as well. And they said that that uh, increase in uh, CXP is gonna come with the Trader Among the Chiss update on November 28th. So a lot of awesome stuff, but it's like a month and a half away. Uh, also, they said they're changing how Disintegrate works. Now, when you disintegrate something, it won't give you CXP. Rather, it's gonna give you unassembled components, which you can then go and uh, use for gear. So it's a little bit better, I think, because the CXP uh, that Disintegrate gave you was really pathetic. It really didn't help much. So it's kind of better if we actually get something hardcore and tangible, like an unassembled component, so you can actually see your Disintegrate you know, uh, benefiting you. So that's going to be awesome as well. So some really awesome changes to Galactic Command. I think those are going to be huge quality of life improvements. Definitely let me know what you guys think about that, but I personally think that was very, very positive. Okay, so I'm kind of jumping around, but as I said earlier, uh, so they're not introducing a new tier of gear, rather what they're going to be doing is introducing new augments. Uh, so they're introduce introducing a new tier of augments which can be received from the flashpoint itself, so that new trader on uh, trader chess, whatever flashpoint, it's going to drop those augments, but also they're releasing, um, the, or they're going to be giving players the ability to craft the new augments as well and then sell those on the GTN. So it's going to create a huge market for these. Uh, if you don't know already, crafting augments is a huge huge, huge money maker. I mean, it's one of those things where you just do it if you want credits. It's one of the best things to craft. They sell like hotcakes. Everyone wants to augment their gear. And so this new thing is going to be a major money maker for those people who have the ability to craft it. And they did say that the materials are going to be gained through PVP and PVE activities. So um, that's going to be really awesome. We're getting new augments as well of operations there's really no new news um, you already know that you're getting the Nahut boss on November 28th after that they said you're getting Saiva and Isaacs in early 2018 but given their schedule we never really know what they mean by early 2018 I could totally see this going on for a few more months it really is taking them forever to come out with these but uh, either way that's basically it there's really no new information about that they're bringing master mode uh, to some of the boss fights as well so for those of you guilds who um, actually want to take on that challenge you're going to be able to do that also, with the uh, October 10th update, I believe, we are going to uh, be able to get unassembled components from operations as well. Uh, right now, unassembled components are only available from PvP, but now you'll be able to get them from operations, giving you yet another avenue to upgrade your gear. So that's going to be a nice change. Okay, in terms of class balancing, uh, we've already seen the changes they're making. Now, I think this roadmap should have really outlined their focus on utilities because that's one thing that has completely been overlooked so far, but they really made no mention of that. They just said, we're going to continue to do class balancing. So I think this was a huge thing, a huge fault in the roadmap. They really should have been more transparent and clear as to what steps they're going to take, but they haven't done that. So we have no, basically no information about the class balancing future. So for the time being, sorcerers are still going to suck, but whatever. In terms of player versus player, uh, so they said that they're going to be increasing bolster to 242 starting on October 10th, uh, which is a huge increase to bolster. I mean, basically that means everyone's going to be starting at a very um, even playing field, but since a gearing does go up to like 248 or whatever, um, you know, for those of you who put that grind in to get the better gear, it's still going to be worth it to do that. But uh, whatever, that's only for non-ranked war zones and arenas though, so obviously not for ranked. Um, other than that, as I mentioned earlier, we're getting a new PvP map, but we have no information about what's happening there. But we do know we're getting an Iocath PvP map for Galactic Starfighter. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that they, had, they have now a focus on introducing a lot more improvements. Uh, they gave us some pretty nice stuff in the past, especially like the mount increase, um, the ability to summon companions while, companions while moving. Uh, we're also, I mentioned, we're gonna be getting like the legacy credits on your um, legacy banks. That's gonna be very nice, but they haven't really given us any details about other new stuff that's coming as well. 
Oh, and one big, big thing I forgot to mention, unassembled components will also be legacy bound. So that's obviously something the community has been asking for, and that's gonna be a huge relief to some of us who basically play just one character, but we wanna still gear up our other characters. Uh, so that's gonna be pretty awesome. So those unassembled components that you earn from PVP, and you will also now earn them from uh, operations, those are going to be legacy bound. Um, okay, in terms of the schedules, and this is gonna be a summary, guys. So basically the new information for the roadmap is done. This is just a summary. Once again, if you do wanna check out what exactly is the United Foundation, some details about how the server merges are gonna go down, I will do a really in-depth, informative video. You can check that out as well. Okay, on to the summary. So on October 10th, what exactly are we getting? We're getting unassembled components that are now gonna drop from master mode bosses. We're gonna be getting an improvement to Galactic Starfighter. We're gonna be getting our PVP bolster increased to 242. Uh, the dark versus light pop-up will display less frequently once the side is won, and they will remain in victory state for much longer. So this will give you more time to defeat the world bosses and reap benefits and stuff. Uh, now substantial improvements are also being made to the Iocath daily area. So they've reduced the Iocath currency requirements for a lot of the daily quests which is probably acting as a huge block because right now IOCAT daily areas are hugely unprofitable to do. They take a lot of time, they don't give you very many rewards. So hopefully this means that IOCAT daily areas are now a lot more, um, let's say, beneficial to doing. Now we're also getting a new Galactic Command Rank Legacy perk, which will give you one, up to 100% CXP bonus depending upon how many characters you've leveled up to Command Rank 300. We're going to be getting a new companion customization vendor that's going to be available in the Bazaar fleet. And this vendor is going to sell you old companion customizations for opposite factions. Because for those of you who don't know right now, with the, uh, with the Knights of the Fallen Empire, you get companions who used to be Republic or Imperial or whatever, but you can't really get the old customizations for them. Those are locked only to whichever faction that companion originally belonged to. So now you can actually, if you were like a trooper, you got Vet and you want to use an old companion customization on Vet, you can now do so. And you're going to buy it from that vendor. He's going to be in the Cartel Bazaar. They're going to be making their class balance changes uh, which they've already mentioned and they've already made posts about that. Uh, they're introducing new taxi points on the Yavin and Tatooine strongholds. Pretty awesome considering those are some of the biggest strongholds and it can be a hassle to try to travel around them sometimes. They're making cartel market store changes, but once again, they provide us no details as to what that means. They're also making the United Forces structural changes, which is why it's named the United Forces Foundation update. And um, those improvements are not going to be visible, so you won't see anything change yet. Now on October 24th, you will see the United Forces Formation update. And what that means is they're gonna have an extended downtime on that day and they're gonna be doing all the structural stuff on their end to make sure it runs all smoothly. Then on November 8th, the United Forces goes live. That's when you will actually see the server merges go down. Um, so they also have an extended downtime on that day. It's probably gonna be a very big patch or whatever. And then for a full week after United Forces goes live, they're gonna be bringing back double rewards. So double CXP, double uh, Valor requisition, and double XP in general. So that's gonna be awesome. And then if you log in and play during that week, you will get uh, a ton of really cool rewards. Then we'll have to wait one and a half months, but when we reach November 28th, that's when we actually get new content. We'll get the Nahut boss. We'll also get the new Flashpoint. Uh, we'll get a new PvP map, a new Galactic Starfighter map, Group Finder will be revamped during this patch. Uh, they'll make significant upgrades to how you queue for multiplayer and solo activities. They'll also give you huge bonuses for all of the random play choices that you make. And it'll also allow for an easy selection of individual activities such as daily areas, flashpoints, and operations. So we'll have to see how that looks in game for a better opinion on that. They're also making class balance changes and a variety of utility adjustments. So finally, we're gonna see some changes, but that's all the way with November 28th. And once again, no details as to what that's gonna look like. Uh, we have launch of legacy-wide currencies for credits and unassembled components. We're also gonna see the, them update the disintegrate system. Uh, we're also getting Ensign Reina Temple to return during that update, uh, obviously during the Flashpoint itself. And then we're getting a distribution of special United Forces rewards. So that's when, you, when you're gonna get your Darth Hexed companion if you got the achievement and the pet and the other stuff. So then all the way on December 12th, they'll be celebrating their anniversary. So it's their six year anniversary. They'll be making a ton of quality of life changes and they'll also be starting up the Life Day event, which I love, I absolutely love the Life Day. So that's gonna be exciting. And then that's about it. So they haven't really told us in detail what's coming early 2018, aside from the two new operation bosses and the concluding chapter to the whole trader storyline. 
but um, they did say that uh, they will upgrade the conquest system and stuff like that a little bit later. Um, they also said they have a focus on some more multiplayer gameplay experiences for both PvP and PvE. So hopefully we'll be getting more in terms of PvP than just a new Warzone, but um, we'll see. Anyways, that guys concludes the roadmap. Holy smokes, this is a 21 minute long video. Hope you guys enjoyed all this new information. I'll leave a link to the roadmap itself so you can go and read and check it out. Also, if you're really curious about the United Forces campaign, as I've plugged in this video about three or four times already, go check out that video. I'm really excited about this thing. It's easily the best part about this roadmap. Also, my opinion video will be coming out soon too, where if you actually care what I have to think about it, go and check that video out. Definitely some uh, hot button topics here and a lot of strong opinions are going to go down. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys are excited. This shows that Swotar is not dying down anytime soon. They have a plan, they have a focus, they're delivering some content at least, and so um, it's all very exciting. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one.